there's no reason why you can't walk into a room and be the baddest bitch there. Dominique, that's long for Dami, and you're watching Misadventures with Dami. Welcome and or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, you should know that I do self-love, beauty, and lifestyle content here on my channel. And if you're returning, hello bestie, I missed you. So as you can see by the title of the video, today we will be discussing confidence. A while back, I did a Q&A over on Instagram and someone asked me how I am so confident. And at the time, I had no way of being able to answer that question because I just didn't know. Believe it or not, confidence is actually something that gets brought up to me pretty often and since so many people bring it up I honestly thought that it was just something that it's just me that's just the essence of how I am but I have actually come to the conclusion that being confident is something that I learned it was not a natural thing at all so today I wanted to sit down do my makeup and share some of the tips that have made me the confident bad bitch that you see here in front of you so if you are interested in any tips and tricks then keep on watching all right so y'all know the drill if I am not looking at the camera please forgive me you know that I'm doing my makeup and it takes a whole lot for me to multitask and also I will be looking back and forth at my notes from time to time so Yes. The first thing is positive self-talk. For the most part, I talk to myself in a very positive manner. And what I mean by that is that I don't have the regular habit of speaking negatively to or about myself. And I know that that's something that can be hard because it's kind of like ingrained in us from an early age to be really critical of ourselves. Like, you know, the saying, you're your own worst critic. And I have just kind of had to learn and program myself to not be that way. It definitely took some practice but eventually I just had to find my own angle to be able to have a positive sense of self and talk positively to myself. The thing that works best for me is I try to talk to myself in the way that I would talk to someone I love. So what I mean by that is I talk to myself in the way that I talk to my significant other, the way I talk to my best friend, the way that I talk to someone that is not me who I love. That is how I try my best to speak to myself. Do I still have slip ups now and there? Yes, of course, but it has helped me in the confidence department so much because I'm not constantly criticizing myself. Positive self-talk definitely contributes to my confidence because it kind of just reminds me that I am a person. And I know that can sound weird, but sometimes it can be really easy to forget that you are a human being, like the same as like everyone around you. It's just like a constant reminder reminder that you're a human being and although you may make mistakes you may do silly things here or there that you're still worthy and capable of loving yourself and feeling valued. So positive self-talk also contributes to having a good self-image from within so that you're not constantly looking for external sources to tell you that you are worthy and good and like capable of loving and being loved. So just remember that words have power even when you are talking to and about yourself. All right I know I look crazy right now but trust the process. Process, okay so my next tip is surround yourself with positivity this one might not seem like it has a lot to do with confidence but stick with me for a second all right so think about it if you are around people who are constantly like downing themselves and talking bad about themselves or talking down to you or the people around them it's not really gonna do much for you and your self-confidence being around people who have a regular habit of being negative are definitely not people who are going to be very uplifting to you and your journey of loving yourself and being more confident in who you are uh, and they're just generally not fun people to have in your life right you should in a way protect your peace and you should try to surround yourself with people who have positive um bright outlook on life because mm, it's, it's just gonna help you in the long run. And it's just a generally good rule of thumb to have people who are encouraging in your general circle. You know what I mean? If you've noticed that being around a particular person or group of people leaves you drained, then you should definitely reconsider the people that you have in your life. Because at the end of the day, humans are social creatures and the people that we choose to spend our free time with can sometimes be a reflection of how we feel about ourselves. So if you look around and you notice that you don't really like your friends, it might be an indication that you don't really like your yourself and you can't be confident if you don't like you or the people around you. I'm just saying. My next tip is 
to learn self-acceptance. Now me personally, I consider self-acceptance to be self-loves, chiller, more accessible little sister. So think of it like this. You have self-loves number, right? You have her on speed dial. You call her, she doesn't pick up, right? But self-acceptance, you have her on Snapchat, all right? You send her a snap and she responds immediately, whether it's a snap or it's a chat. She's gonna respond. You get what I'm saying? No? Okay, I'll explain. All right, so just like most things in life, self-love is a journey. Unfortunately, we don't just wake up one day and decide that we love every single thing about ourselves. We don't love all the stretch marks. We don't love all the cellulite, you know. It takes time to get to a place where you can truly say that you love yourself. You love your flaws. You love your imperfections. So if you think of self-love as a journey, think of self-acceptance as a step in that journey because I really truly promise you that I did not just wake up one day and decide you know what I am in love with me I am in love with all 200 something pounds of me myself and I and that's entirely okay because self-love is a process just like I tell y'all to trust the process when it comes to me doing my face you have to trust the process when it comes to self-love and learning to accept yourself is going to be a great step and moving forward and loving yourself entirely. Because some days you're gonna look in the mirror and you'll be like, damn, I'm a bad bitch. And then other days you're gonna look in the mirror and you'll be like, wow, don't feel like that. But once you've learned self-acceptance, on those days when you are not feeling like top tier, top shelf, bad bitch energy, like you are still gonna look in the mirror and be like, you know what? I'm not feeling the best today, but I'm still worthy of love and I'm going to go out in the world and I'm gonna do the best I can and we're gonna try again tomorrow. That is self-acceptance and it is going to get you through so much and it's definitely gonna to contribute to your confidence. Learning self-acceptance is definitely important in laying the foundation for your self-love journey because you'll always have self-acceptance to lean back on. So you'll know that when self-love doesn't pick up, self-acceptance will be there to get you through. Now this one I feel like is kind of a no-brainer, but I still wanna mention it because it has greatly helped me and my confidence over the years, all right? And that is comparing ourselves to others. We should stop that. As a society and really as a culture, we've been conditioned to think that it's normal, natural, in fact, to compare ourselves to other people. When in actuality, it's not. That's not normal. A lot of people think that it's just natural, like human nature, but it's really something that we learn to do as we grow older and we live more life. We start thinking, oh wow, I could be skinnier. Like I would look better if I looked like her or I could be smarter. We are constantly comparing ourselves to other human beings. And I mean, who can blame us? We see it in pop culture. We see it in all the media that we consume. It has programmed us to all think that it is normal to compare ourselves to the people around us and it's not and life shouldn't be that way so as hard as it is a few years ago I made the personal decision to just stop comparing myself to the people around me and it's hard because I keep quite a few bad bitches in my circle all right but I just had to train my brain to be like no you are not in competition with this person or that person or your friends or your family members or your peers you are in your own lane because there are so many things that we as individuals have that other people would want so as cliche as it is don't compare yourself to other people because you never have any idea what someone else may or may not be insecure about and if you're sitting here and you're still pondering whether or not comparing yourself has anything to do with your self-confidence then heed this warning from some dead old white lady comparison is the thief of joy don't argue with me argue with her all right, so I decided to save this one for last because I feel that this is the ultimate tip to boost your confidence, and that is to stop giving a f what people think of you. As a former chronic people pleaser, I think that this one was definitely the most difficult for me to grasp because as a woman, as a black woman, as a fat black 
queer woman. For most of my life, all I really wanted was to make myself more palatable so that I would be easily digestible for the people that are around me because I grew up in predominantly white spaces. But somewhere in my late teenage dumb, I realized that it didn't matter how small I made myself, there was always going to be an issue for somebody. There was always going to be something about me that somebody didn't like, that somebody wanted to change. And once I realized that, all bets were f***ing off because it was like, why am I trying so hard to please unpleasable people? The older you get, the less you care about what people think. But the sooner you can grasp that, you can harness all the energy it takes to feel confident and love yourself as thoroughly as you should. Now believe me when I tell you, I know how hard it is to just stop caring what people think. And I'm not saying that you can do it cold turkey. You probably can't. But every day, day by day, just take more time to look around you and observe how you act and how much of how you act and how you present yourself is based on the perceptions of how other people think you should be. It's life changing, isn't it? It will, it will be, it will be. You will realize that, that life is your oyster, all right? You will realize that there's no reason why you can't walk into a room and be the baddest bitch there. I get that it can be hard though, but once you get past that hump, life is new again. But at the end of the day, the key to confidence has so much more to do with you and how you view yourself than the perception of others ever will. I promise you that. Because people can be so mean and so nasty, but I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. They're projecting. We as human beings damn near come out the womb projecting our problems and insecurities onto other people. So why should you let the insecurities of other people and what they have to say about you shape your life? Why would you not live your best life all because someone doesn't like you or how you look or how you act? They're not you and they shouldn't have any control over how you live or how you feel about yourself. Now, this has nothing to do with constructive criticism, which I feel like people get really confused in our day and age, but that's for another time another discussion, if you will. But in the meantime, practice not giving a f what other people think about you, and I swear you will see your confidence skyrocket. All right, y'all, so this is the finished look, and those are all the tips that I have for how to become a more confident individual. I know that a lot of those tips may have seemed super basic, but honestly, basic is sometimes the most effective, especially when you are on a self-love journey, a self-acceptance journey. You really just need to be able to focus on finding value from within, because then external sources mean absolutely nothing. So if you found this video helpful, please consider liking down below. It really helps me out a lot. Comment and tell me if you are going to try to incorporate any of these tips into your daily life. And subscribe if you haven't already because I love seeing returning besties here on the channel. All right, so I hope that you all are happy, healthy, and thriving, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.